come down and introduce Mira. This is the first time she's done this uh, in a public forum like this. She has appeared on several uh, of my seminars. And I got to know Mira because she wrote me a letter um, about a year ago and um, found out that I had been diagnosed with leukemia. And um, it was a long, passionate, beautiful letter, beautifully written, saying that she really felt that if I could come to an understanding of uh, going through a past life regression that not only would it be helpful to me, but it would be as healing as well. And it turned out that that was a perfect storm because at that time she brought Anita Murjani to me, who um, has written a book called Dying to Be Me, which I encourage all of you to read, and um, also John of God, who I had a healing with in Brazil as well. It all came together at the same time. Um, Mira grew up in, uh, in a communist country in Bulgaria and left um, when she was 17 years of age or 18 uh, to come to the United States just on a dream. Uh, she spoke English, but not, not real fluently, um, and enrolled at uh, NYU University, got herself a degree there, and then went on and went to law school at Syracuse University, and <clears throat> not only completed her law school training and became a corporate lawyer, but she passed the New York bar on the first time when English isn't her first language. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that's her most impressive uh, credential. Um, Mira and I have come to know each other and love each other very much, and I'm so proud to come here and introduce her to you. And what I would say to you is uh, when, you, when she begins the regression, is to try to, uh, I, have, I have a saying that I say in all of my talks, that, which is have a mind that's open to everything and attach nowhere. Just willingly suspend your disbelief and just allow yourself. Because I was a, uh, very much of a skeptic about past life regressions, even though Brian Weiss is a very close friend of mine. We've appeared on stages all over the world. I still saw a little bit of weirdness in there. Uh, but I, I included the entire transcript of uh, Mira's uh, tra uh, past life regression with me in my book, Wishes Fulfilled. It's in the last chapter. So without any further ado, Mira Kelly from Bulgaria. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, everyone. I could not have asked for a better introduction. And um, so thank you, Wayne. Um, I am really, um, it's really wonderful to be here with you today and to speak with you about the fascinating subject of past life regression. And um, what we are going to do today is I am going to um, share with you the story of how I came to um, not only know the healing power of past life regression for myself, but also do this for other people. And also um, we'll dedicate the majority of our time to actually doing a regression because I want you to experience what that feels like. So um, as, as Wayne said, I. Um, um, before switching careers, so to say, and being a past life regressionist, I was actually a corporate lawyer in New York City. And at that time, um, I just had a normal life like anybody else's. And the story of how regression came into my life um, is really something that began when I was much younger, when I was 13 years old. But the next chapter came, into my uh, came in my late 20s. Uh, and it all began rather unassumingly. I was, um, I had a tooth filling uh, break and I had to find a dentist. So I asked around and um, I, I received some recommendations and I picked a dentist who was said to be um, one of the best dentists in New York City. So I went to see him and after doing the dental work that he did, um, it, didn't, it didn't quite work really well and what happened as a result of the dental work that he did my jaw um, my jaw really was out of balance and I was I I in excruciating pain there was really nothing structurally wrong with me it's just that the muscles of my jaw wouldn't wouldn't be able to relax because of the dental work so for about a year I was really in so much pain that I wouldn't be able to open my mouth and eat. I wouldn't be able to, you know, speak with comfort because the pain was always right here. And um, so, of course, I did everything anybody else would in my shoes, right? I changed dentist, I changed my pillow, I changed my mattress. I began uh, going to physical therapy three times a week because that's what my uh, dentist recommended. 
I also started sleeping with a night guard so that, you know, my jaw would find some comfort and so that I would be able to have the muscles of my mouth relaxed. And of course, that was very uncomfortable, right? And of course, I, would, I also was taking uh, pills to manage the pain all the time. And I had to change my diet as well just to accommodate around this issue. So even though it was a small thing, right, there was nothing on the surface wrong with me, it really impacted my life in a dramatic way. So um, for a year, I was constantly going between the dentist office and the physical therapist office. And one day, I had a scheduled appointment with my dentist, and I walked in, and he said to me, um, Mira, it's time that you face the reality. He said to me, your jaw is not improving, so you either have to learn to live with the pain, or you have to have an operation. And um, I have to tell you, living with the pain was, you know, not, a, not something you can do. But the other option of actually breaking my jaw, something that was not broken to begin with, right, and then reattaching it with wires seemed even worse. So I walked out of the office, of his office, and I, as chance would have it, I had a, a physical training uh, a therapy session right afterwards. So I just was walking from one office going to the other. And I was really in a state of just really um, feeling desperate, <laughs> really not knowing what to do. And um, so I walked into the therapist's office, and the owner of the office was right behind, behind the receptionist's desk. And he was really in a very good mood. He was really very joyful. And um, in a very bubbly way, he shared with me that he and his wife were, were leaving for a vacation the following day to go to uh, uh, Hawaii. And I went, in a, in a split second, just hearing that, I went from a state of being completely sad and desperate and not knowing what to do, to being so mad, to being so upset, mm -hmm. because there I was, facing a life of permanent pain or an operation that who knows if it would even work, and there he is, having provided services to me for a year, and me having paid out of my pocket for every visit, and nothing has improved where I was, and he was going with my money <laughs> on vacation to Hawaii, a place I've always wanted to visit, right? So, so you understand how I felt. And um, as my session started, uh, I, I was lying on the, on the massage table, and I was thinking to myself, what am I to do? There has to be something, right? But at the same time, I was thinking, I, I did everything. And um, at that moment, as if a, a light bulb lit up in my mind, and I remembered how when I was 13 years old, I actually read a book on past life regressions. And the book was written by Brian Weiss. And in the book, he had detailed all these stories of how people had all these um, traumatic experiences, all these traumas, all these uh, emotional and physical issues be healed just by visiting a past life. And back then I was so fascinated with, with what I read that I, I actually had an experience myself. I, I regressed myself when I was, um, uh, after reading the book. So as I was lying on the, that massage table so many years later, I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe this is something that could help. It's, I haven't thought about it, but maybe this is the answer. So I very quickly found a practitioner in New York City, and I scheduled a session with her. And, um, and I went there with high hopes, you know, that something would help me. And uh, my f I didn't experience anything during my first regression. It was just nothing. And I left her office still thinking, you know, I should give this another chance. And I scheduled a second session with her. And during my second session with her, I saw a very, very, very brief image of myself as a slave. Um, I experienced myself as this tall, very strong, muscular uh, black man who was, um, who was enslaved and who was working on a cotton plantation down south. And, um, and it was such a... Um, there was such a profound sadness uh, to, to this experience. And it, and it was really just an image that I saw. And it was really just the knowingness that I, was, uh, I had experienced as this man in a, another lifetime. I had experienced such atrocities, and I have been the subject of such inhumane treatment that my spirit was so broken that as that man, 
I was actually grateful to them, to my owners, that they were even feeding me. And uh, as I was experiencing it, I was feeling his feelings of what that feels like, right? To, to be grateful that somebody's even keeping you alive. But at the same time, I was also f thinking to myself, how could this possibly be, right? How could you be grateful for something? How could you feel so powerless? And the other thing is, I, as that man, I, I saw myself and I felt what it feels like to have a metal collar right here around my neck. And there were uh, four other metal collars around my wrists and around my ankles. And there was a chain connecting all five metal collars. And that's how they were controlling me with, with, with color, um, with, with chains being chained all the time. And um, the, the jaw pain that I was experiencing was predominantly right here on my left side, right where the, the corner of the jaw is. And, and, that re and that regression and that experience, I saw myself as this man having this color and the color always hurting right there. You know, always having a near permanent wound right there and always hurting when you swallow or when you move and, or when you get pulled around. So I have to tell you, it was really a very cathartic experience for me. I, I left the office crying, really just, just crying and, and um, pretty much spend the rest of the day, it was on Saturday, and I pretty much spend the rest of the Saturday just crying and really having this experience of something really profoundly connecting deep inside me. And I have to tell you, on an intellectual level, I was reasoning with myself at the same time of how could you feel so powerless, but at the same time knowing the stories of women who have been kidnapped and then falling in love with their kidnappers. So on an, an intellectual level, I was able to understand that, that interaction between people. But also um, on, a, on an emotional level, it felt really very... Um, very, very deep and, like I said, very cathartic. And there were really not that much thinking that was being processed. It was just tears and tears. And um, I have to tell you, on Sunday morning, I woke up and the pain wasn't there. And it actually hasn't returned ever since. And uh, during my follow-up, uh, my next meeting with my dentist, he just didn't know what to make out of it. Uh, he really called my healing a miracle, and that was the end of it, right? That was the end of my pain, and then he talks of an operation. And what I have learned uh, through this work, through regressing people, and of course myself, is that the body is really such a, such a kind partner that we have, because when there are issues, they usually start on an emotional level, things that we haven't resolved or resolved, things that we haven't faced. And sometimes when we aren't really looking into those things, when we're just letting them, you know, be under the carpet, it just, just you know, um, what, what our body assists us is brings us all these pains and all these illnesses just to tell us, pay attention. This is something you need to pay attention to. And the body is sometimes very literal with the way things are presented to us. And in my case, you know, the jaw is that place which represents speaking up and um, really being able to communicate. And um, it will come as no surprise for you if I tell you, uh, uh, when I tell you that at that time I was very much in the same place at my work environment, in my law firm. As, a, as an attorney, I was very much in a place where I felt that there was this authority there and that there was this power play between me and my uh, um, employers. And, um, and um, what has happened is that I, I have been working in my law firm for, for a while, and I have really proven myself, and during every, um, during every review, I was getting these excellent reviews, excellent feedback on how well I'm doing and uh, how well my work is being uh, uh, received. But at the same time, I felt that I wasn't equal to everybody in my law firm because my salary was just that little less than everybody else's, right? My office was just that little worse than everybody else's. So one day I gathered up all my courage and I went and I asked for my salary to be increased and for me to be assigned a different office, to be given a different office. And um, even though what I was asking for was really nominal so that I can just feel equal to everybody else, and even though there were a few empty offices standing, uh, just, just sitting unoccupied, um, I was told that as a matter of principle, they're not going to increase my salary and they're not going to give me another office. And that was the, the 
And it, for, for me, it really seemed inconceivable because, you know, I was this excellent, excellent uh, employee. And from a very dedicated and very devoted employee, they were turning me into a disgruntled employee, right? And I was wondering, how could this be? Why are these people not seeing it? So that was the kind of emotional stuff I was dealing throughout that year. You know, I was chewing on in my mind while my jaw was hurting and while I was see uh, seeking to find a solution to a pain that really didn't originate in my jaw, but it was really on an emotional level but back then I wasn't really thinking about the connection and it was that regression that allowed me to understand that <clears throat> being powerful does not come from an authority figure granting you that power. It really comes from within yourself, you feeling equal to everybody else, right, despite the circumstances. So once I realized that, then I decided that there was no really a need for me to do anything beyond that. I loved where I was working, I really loved my colleagues, and I really felt no need for me to, at that moment, take action. But I felt within me the power that if I were to change this, I can actually change this. I can easily go and get another job. So in that moment, I realized that, you know, I can speak up and stand up for myself. And me being equal comes from within me, not somebody else's understanding of what is. Um, was really very liberating. And just like that, the pain, like I said to you, in a day was gone. And just like that, I forgot about bringing that, I was no longer bringing that energy in, in my work environment. And uh, because of this experience, because of this powerful experience, um, I began telling everybody about regression, right? I, re um, I began telling all my friends, all my, um, all my family members, and every time someone would say to me, this is what I'm facing, this is what's hurting. Guess what my answer was? My answer was always, let's do a regression. So naturally, I was reading every book there was. I was regressing everyone who would agree to it. And of course, with time, it also seemed natural that I would um, uh, study with people and become, become certified in doing this work. So this is really the story of how I experienced for myself regression and, um, and how it all started for me. And um, the reason why I chose to tell you this story as opposed to any other regression story is because of the minuscule experience that I had, right? It was just one scene. It wasn't a prolonged, complicated movie with great details, with, with audio and video, right? It was just one little scene, and yet it had such tremendous power for me to see things differently. So I want to encourage you when we do our regression today, to just allow yourself to experience everything that is there. Our time together has been divinely orchestrated. It's no wonder that you were brought into this room today and that you came into this room. So wherever you find yourself, there is there's something out there for, to assist you, in you on your path. So just allow it and let it be. And um, like I said, no matter what shape and form it comes, just accept it and have your thinking mind. Just notice rather than judge. And just like Wayne said earlier, suspend, suspend any disbelief and just let it be. And everything always comes perfectly at the end together, really comes together perfectly. Um, and also the other thing I want to um, tell you before we begin is to encourage you to imagine. Uh, some people uh, say to me, but Mira, what if I'm imagining what I'm sharing with you? And I always tell them, well, that's okay, keep on imagining. Because uh, usually what happens is by you just allowing for the images, for the information to flow in, you're really grounding the experience. And just within a few moments of people telling me I'm imagining, what happens is the scene changes there in a completely different place. The experience is very, very different. And uh, so just allow it. Whatever is there is there. Even if it's just symbols, it will benefit you. So with that, I want to ask those of you who have things on your lap just to put them to the side and make yourself comfortable. And um, we're going to do this with our eyes closed. So just make sure that your chair is just right. Keep your posture so that you can breathe easy. And, um, and if you can play the music for me, thank you. So just close your eyes and we'll begin. 
And I will just take a few moments to make sure the music is right and to drink a little water. So take this time as an opportunity to just relax. And if you ladies feel like lying down, please feel free. So take a deep breath and slowly let it out. And just take another deep breath and feel how your body feels in the position that you're sitting in. And if you want to just wiggle your shoulders and just move around so you can feel comfortable And take another deep breath and hold it and slowly let it out. And as you exhale on your next breath, allow all stress, all discomfort, all tension, all pain to leave your body. And as you inhale, inhale the sense of divine love, divine peace that surrounds you. This divine presence is always around you, always available for you to connect to it. And let your breath now spread this feeling of tranquility throughout your entire body. Breathe in and feel how you are becoming deeper and deeper relaxed. And now begin to go within even deeper by focusing on relaxing every part of your body and releasing any tension that might be stored there. Allow your scalp to relax and invite the relaxation into your skull. As the relaxation moves gently from one side of your brain to the other, you're allowing yourself to synchronize not only the right hemisphere with the left hemisphere of your brain, but you're also allowing yourself to synchronize your physical self with your higher self. Near the center of your brain, there is a gland called the pineal gland. The pineal gland is designed to allow you to perceive into other dimensional realms and frequencies. It is said to be the seat of the soul in the human body. So allow yourself now to feel how your pineal gland is opening up for the work that we are doing today. And allowing you to see and experience beyond the present time and beyond the present space. 
And now the feeling of relaxation is gently moving into your eyes. Relaxing your eyes. Feel how your eyebrows are becoming loose and relaxed. Feel the little ma muscles in the corners of your eyes relaxing. Sense how your forehead is releasing and any tension stored in the muscles of your cheeks is simply letting, being let go of. Release all tension and feel how your lips tingle with relaxation and you're beginning to relax deeper and deeper within. And this beautiful feeling of tranquility, peace, and harmony now flows down your neck, soothing and relaxing the muscles of your neck. Feel the relaxation move down your throat and allow for your throat to feel clear and open. And now invite the relaxation into your shoulders. Any tension that is stored in your shoulders is being washed away. It drifts away. And in this moment, just for this little while that we do this today, allow all cares of the world to drift away. Set aside all your worries and allow yourself to enjoy the feeling of relaxation that engulfs you and embraces you. The sense of serenity is now flowing down your spine, one vertebrae after another, down, down, going down, helping you relax deeper and deeper within. As the energy of relaxation moves down your spine, it allows for the muscles of your upper back to release. It allows for the muscles of your middle back to relax. And now the muscles of your lower back are releasing all tension stored there so that you can have the feeling of being peaceful, tranquil, and supported in this moment. And I want you now for a moment to hold this beautiful, warm feeling of relaxation in your lower back so that we can return back to your throat and allow for your collarbone to relax. And feel now how this gentle, beautiful, warm feeling of relaxation is moving down your shoulders and into your arms, loosening, relaxing 
the muscles of your arms. Your arms, your arms feel heavy. And the feeling of relaxation now is washing down towards your palms and your fingers. And if you place your attention at the tips of your fingers, you will be able to sense a slight tingling sensation at the tips of your fingers. And this is just a confirmation of how you are allowing yourself to go deeper and deeper. And now, with your next breath of air, allow for your chest to expand and feel very open and light. Your breath is deep and even, and it will remain this way throughout the entire time that we do this. And every next breath you take will take you deeper and deeper in this beautiful state of relaxation. Allow the sense of tranquility and serenity to surround your heart. Your heart feels serene, blissful, and embraced with love. With every next beat of your heart, your heart is pumping this wonderful feeling of love and nurture to every organ, to every tissue, to every cell of your body. You feel comfortable, you feel safe, you feel protected. And in this moment, your body is relaxed and your mind is calm. Relax the muscles of your stomach. And allow for this beautiful feeling now to wash into your hips, allowing for the muscles there to release any tension. And the feeling of releasing and letting go is moving into your legs, relaxing the muscles allowing for your knees to feel very comfortable, allowing for the muscles of your calves to feel relaxed, loose and relaxed. And now the feeling of relaxation is moving into your feet into your heels and the soles of your feet are comfortable and the relaxation now moves in your toes. The energy of this blissful tranquility surrounds you, surrounds your entire body like a cocoon. You feel safe and protected. You allow yourself to drift deeper and deeper into this state of tranquility. And now I want you to imagine a beautiful garden Imagine how in this garden the grass is green. Imagine the pretty flowers. 
see their vibrant colors, smell their aromatic fragrances. and see or imagine the butterflies that flutter their wings around you and around the flowers. And you can even hear the birds and their melodic songs. Imagine the beautiful trees in this garden and feel the pleasant warmth of the sun on your skin and how the breeze gently caresses your face. It feels so good to be in this beautiful, magical garden. Everything is luminous. Everything glows as the divine light of source moves through the garden. You feel blissful. You feel one with everything. And there is a sense of lightness and clarity in you. You look to the side and you see a path. Imagine yourself or see yourself or feel how you're beginning to walk on the path now. As you follow the path, you see that it leads to a hill and that there's a set of stairs that go up the hill. The stairs are illuminated by the same light of source that you experienced in the garden. You begin climbing the stairs with ease and you feel a sense of comfort as you take each step higher and higher you go higher and higher. And every step takes you one step higher and higher. And at the same time, you're feeling lighter and lighter. You see that at the top of the stairs, there is a door and I want you to notice now, how does this door look like? What does it look like? As you approach the top of the stairs, I want you to stay there for a moment and just observe the door. See how it's beginning to open gently and slowly. You're in front of the door now. And the door is wide open. And you see that there is a beautiful white light surrounding the threshold. And on the other side of the light, there are the images feelings and sounds for you to discover. And you feel that in this moment, your mind is open to everything that comes to you. Your mind is allowing for whatever needs to be there to make itself known to you, no matter what shape or form it takes. And you trust that your higher self will show you exactly what you need in this moment to guide you and assist you. I want you now to see, feel, or imagine 
how you cross through this threshold, how you move into the light. Move through the light and come to the other side of it. You are in a different place, in a different time. Take a moment to orient yourself. What is around you? See, feel, or hear what is around you. Look down at your feet and see if you're wearing any footwear. And if you are, what does it look like? Look at your legs and at your torso. Are you wearing any clothes? And if you are, what do they look like? Stretch your hands in front of you and see if you're holding anything on your hands or if you have any decorations on your hands or any decorations on your body. Are you a man or a woman? Does your energy feel like the energy of a young person or an older person? Is it daytime or nighttime? What is around you? Are there any others with you? You can go backward and forward in time to explore fully the story of the lifetime that you're experiencing. So explore the important events in this lifetime. If there's anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, you can just rise above the scene and observe from above without needing to experience any discomfort. You can just rise above. Do you recognize any of the people as people you now share your life with? I want you now to go to the last day of this lifetime and see how you pass away, see the circumstances around the death in that lifetime. Experiencing how your spirit transitions away from your body will forever free you of any fears of death and dying.
What lessons did you learn in this lifetime? How is the life you experienced connected to the person that you are today? What is important for you to know about your present life? Allow yourself now to drift away from these scenes, drifting and floating away. Allow yourself to drift and float away. In this deep state of relaxation that you are in right now, you can receive guidance from your higher self from your teachers, from your guides, from your angels. So allow your energy now to open up and expand higher and higher. In this moment, you are connected to all that is. You are connected to divine love and wisdom. In this moment, your higher self is present to serve as the conduit for that information to be conveyed to you. Feel, see, or imagine the energy of your higher self. And now feel, see, or imagine how your energy merges with the energy of your higher self. Your higher self now and you are one. Feel the love and adoration that your higher self has for you. In this moment, you are in direct communication, in oneness, with your higher self. And your higher self encourages you to ask for assistance in every, any areas you would like to receive guidance and clarity on. Allow for your thinking mind now to ask a question that you would like to receive guidance on. Because you're one with your higher self in this moment, you can observe all of your present life and all of its circumstances from the perspective of your higher self, from the perspective of all that is. And from this perspective of expanded understanding and infinite wisdom, what would your higher self answer? Allow your mind now to ask another question. And again, from the perspective of expanded understanding and infinite wisdom, what would your higher self answer? Ask your higher self if it has any guidance, any words of wisdom or encouragement that you would like to offer to you. Allow 
and all information you received. Let it seep into you. Let it transform you. Let it help you create permanent positive changes in your life. Take away with you the feeling of love that your higher self and all that is has for you. You're always loved. You're always guided. Information will continue to be provided to you by your higher self, your guides and your angels in your dreams and in your waking moments as intuition, signs and inspired thoughts. Your dreams will be more vivid over the next few nights and you will remember them more clearly than ever before. Now it is time to return back to your present life. You will remember everything you experienced today very clearly. And any time you do anything like this, it will always be a very enjoyable and very transformative experience. And now I will count from one to five. And on the count of five, you will be wide awake, feeling wonderful, feeling very refreshed and very rested. One, begin to come up. Two, orient yourself to the present moment and the present time. Three, begin to gradually awake. You feel rested and refreshed. And four, you can begin to wiggle your fingers and your toes just to get the blood circulating and your muscles working again. And five, you're wide awake and you can open your eyes. Hello, everyone. I very much want to hear the stories of those of you who had experiences. So I would love for you to share them with me, either by emailing me or posting them on my Facebook page. Um, it, my Facebook page is under Mira Kelly and my email is info at mirakelly.com and you spell that M-I-R-A-K-E-L-L-E-Y. And um, I want to um, say to you that this was just really a, a little tasting of, of what it feels like to have a regression with me. Um, this was about 30 to 40 minutes that we took today. I usually take about four to five hours with people. So the experience is really very much, uh, much more deep and much more, um, how should I say, really uh, it goes in great depths and, and healing. So for those of you who didn't have an experience today, you just had a very nice relaxation. And um, I also want to tell you maybe what you needed was a little more time, a little more time for me to ask questions and guide you. So I want to share with you that I have a CD coming out with a, a recorded regression which very much goes into this process and takes you very deep and because you have all allowed me to hypnotize you, um, for you, by listening to the recording, you will be that much deeper and that much quicker into the experience if you, if you listen to the recording. And also, um, on that very same CD, there is a, um, a meditation which was designed to take the information that you bring in from the regression and help you create your best life yet. And that CD will be out in a month in September. And for those of you who want to work with me personally, I also see clients, so reach out to me. And uh, I want to thank you very, very much. Thank you.